Welcome to GoTafe's audio series on building resilience in times of crisis. Today's episode is the first in a series of wellbeing and mental health discussions with a focus on staying connected and healthy during COVID-19. For our first episode, GoTafe staff member Ash Bex has a chat with psychologist Peter Charleston, introducing us to the concept of mental health and providing tips on how to manage anxiety and depression during this crisis. Enjoy. Hi, everyone, and welcome. This is uh, our little session today. We're joined with Peter Charlson, who is a psychologist, and he's going to be, uh, he's been kind enough to offer us some of his time to um, have a little chat with the GoTafe community and offer us some tips and suggestions on how we can build resilience in times of crisis such as these. So uh, thank you very much for joining us, Peter. And um, if you don't mind kicking us off, maybe just telling us a little bit about your background and giving a bit of an introduction. Yeah, not a problem. Um, I've been a psychologist now for around 27 years, um, half my lifetime. So I have been in government jobs, private institutions, and now I work for myself for the last 10 years. Yeah, so I see a whole range of people um, who come as individuals, couples, teams. Uh, so I do, I help people with their personal development and their professional development. Yeah, great. And what, do you want to just get, tell us, give us a little bit of an intro about what you're going to be talking about today and then feel free to just get stuck straight into it, mate. Yeah, today we'll talk a little bit about resilience and what I call psychological skills, which is a bunch of skills that pretty much originate in your mind that we often don't spend much time building um, in our normal daily lives. But during this crisis, it's become very apparent to everyone, I think, that our mental health is so important. And I'm going to give you my version of what mental health actually is yeah. and what skills you can learn and improve on. Yeah, that sounds great, mate. Thank you very much again. And uh, I think a lot of people will benefit from that uh, during this time. So, yeah, kick it off, mate. And let's, yeah, we'd love to hear, hear what you have to say. All right. So... As we know, most of us are having a different year than we normally have during this crisis. We've all been forced into some sort of lockdown. That's mean restrictions on our social life, restrictions on our work. All sorts of things have changed. So this then poses a challenge on our mental health, as in how are we going to cope with this new reality even if it's temporary how are we going to cope with what may or may not happen in the future as well so there's a real challenge to our emotional state a challenge to our our moods and our attitudes so um you know even for someone like me who's been in the industry for 27 years i have my moments of oh gee i'm not i'm not doing so well today and I, I myself have to think about, all right, what skills do I need? What do I need to remind myself of to get back on track? Just to summarise, um, people are calling this the FUD factor in terms of what we're needing to cope with. We're going through some genuine fears, a lot of uncertainty, and obviously, as a result of that, people have quite a bit of self-doubt about their own lives and where it's heading, but also about what's happening in the world, um, the bigger picture. So coping with all of this is a real test of our psychological strength and psychological skills. So it, it, it at times feels overwhelming, it, um, almost like there's this big weight on your shoulders that you can't really solve. So psychological skills help you through the uncertainty, help you overcome your fears and reduce the self-doubt. Do you think for, for a lot of people, it's just recognising that they're actually feeling that way as well as probably maybe a, the first good step towards Absolutely. knowing Absolutely. what's needed? So admitting where you're at in terms of how you're feeling and... Um, what state you're in is so important. Um, the more you try to pretend that everything's okay when it's not, the worse you actually get. Uh, a lot of people who try to cope with 
stress, for instance, at work, um, try to work even harder to reduce the stress, but that makes it worse. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because they end up taking on too much. Sort of snowballs. Yep. Rather than addressing how they're feeling, addressing their emotional needs. Yeah. And, and their own personal needs. Yeah. So a lot of people actually suffer in, in times like this of overwork mm. yeah. because they're trying to keep busy and trying almost trying to do too much in order to avoid the unpleasant emotions. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that happening. <laughs> and this is because of, of, with this slide, it's because of, we, we don't feel in control. We can't predict what's going to happen and we don't have m much many ways of expressing our fears or how overwhelmed we are. Mm. So unfortunately, we're, we're prone to um, bottle it all up inside us. And do you think for the, the lack of outlets for frustration, that sort of ties in with obviously what's going on with the lockdown and people not being able to go see their friends or go to yeah. the gym to perhaps burn off some of that frustration? Is that kind of what that's alluding to there? Absolutely. So unfortunately, when when we're not processing what's happening in our mind, what, when we're not processing these emotions, then we tend to what's called project them out towards others. And it, it's often projected out in an unhealthy way. So we're seeing at the moment, a lot more people than usual are becoming more grumpy mm. and short tempered. Uh, and sometimes this is about really what are usually really small issues but at the moment we can't handle as much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause so people are fighting more than usual. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Or people are using unhealthy crutches more than usual. So they might be drinking more alcohol more than usual or gaming more than usual or all sorts of other things that are actually avoiding what they need to confront. Yeah. And do you have, I'm guessing these are on our next, some of our next slides, but some, um, some kind of sort of basic ideas and, and ways that people can kind of help curve some of that frustration and grumpiness. Absolutely. So as you, you were right in saying that the, the first step is to admit where you're at. Yeah. Admit how you're feeling. Obviously to people who you trust and who can be supportive and allow yourself to have those I'm not coping moments mm. rather than deny they're happening. And yeah. in doing so, you're actually warning people that you're not hundred percent today and that helps them adjust and it's particularly adjust their expectations of you. Yeah. During that time. I think that just comes down to just simple communication as well. Um, but I guess sometimes that's quite hard to do as well in a, in a very digital environment. Yeah. Um, I don't find the digital environment that hard. As long as you've got some self-awareness, Yeah, you can express these things quite clearly. Um, as long as you're willing to be honest with, with the person you're talking to about where you're at. Yeah. So if you have a, a relationship built of trust and respect, then you're able to be this open with each other. Yeah. Yeah. So here are some of the, some of the things that people are going through at the moment. Some people are actually becoming more sarcastic than usual, for instance, uh, as a way of coping with what they're going through, but this may not actually be that helpful. Yeah. And I think that the, the, all of these feelings, especially those last two, helplessness and hopelessness, there's certainly a lot of uncertainty around what's going on. And I think that that kind of obvious, I think that would lead to a bit of a, you know, overthinking mind state that um, yep. people can get themselves in. And is there something that people can kind of do to sort of just sort of not revert themselves back to their normal life, but just sort of like take a little bit of a break from some of that overwhelming feeling? Yeah, well, what we're, what most of us are overwhelmed by at the moment is what's happening that's outside of our control. Mm. And yes, it's not unpredict it's unpredictable. We don't have answers to a lot of these things. So the basic way of dealing with that helplessness as hopelessness 
is bringing it back down to what you can control, which is you in this moment right now and what you're doing with your time and your energy. Yeah. So if you can take it from, from, from big external stuff that we can't solve down to what can I solve right now? What, what are some of those basic, I guess, needs and, and stuff that people can kind of hone in on? Cause I think that maybe sometimes people do forget that they still need to, you know, breathe and drink water and eat food and you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So what I'm seeing at the moment with a lot of my clients is a lot of the unhealthy behaviors and unhealthy thinking and, and emotions such as anxiety and stress. So that's why I've got this kind of summary of yeah. what people are doing at the moment that doesn't actually help very well. So I'll move on a bit. I'll get, I'll answer your question in about two slides. Uh, all good. <laughs> Jumping ahead. Uh, so it, just to define what we're talking about here in terms of stress and anxiety and depression, the way I look at it is that they're oriented in time. So anxiety is about the future mm. and anxiety has a purpose. It's trying to predict what might happen, but it's using worst case scenario to do it. Right. So in worrying about what might happen, that might be bad. Our mind is trying to control what we don't know, the unknown. Obviously, well, it, that's quite unhealthy. Mm. So we, we need to bring our mind back to the present when we notice ourselves doing that. We're trying to control the future, but we're trying to control it with worst case scenario. It just does not make us feel any better in the present. Yeah. And I guess that kind of ties in with what you were saying about making sure that people just bring simplify their lives instead of thinking out here, start coming back in and just yep. hone in on what, what's needed today and what, what you need to just work through what's going through right at this moment, you know? Yeah. Although sometimes people have stress in the current moment because they're expecting too much of themselves in the current moment. So that's, that's what I mean by stress that what you've got on your plate right now, you might think you just don't have the skills or the, or the time to do it all. Yeah. Whereas depression is more about the past. It's more about looking back and um, it's usually anger turned inwards is, mm -hmm. is how some people define depression. It's usually to do with blaming ourselves for something that's gone wrong in mm -hmm. the past that we just can't let go of. Yeah, that's so, interesting. I like that term, anger turned, turned inwards. That's, that's a good way of putting it. I've never heard it put like that. That, that it's about something that we haven't forgiven ourselves for mm. that we're blaming ourselves for a lot of people i talk to with depression are blaming themselves for things that weren't even in their control when it when they happened yeah which is quite unrealistic yeah yeah so there, there's ways of unraveling that it's, yeah. it's, which is pretty much what a lot of psychology is all about yeah yeah and i, I see mindfulness um there as well that's something that you'll probably touch on in one of your next slides because i feel like that's a word that i've been seeing thrown around a bit and um probably something that could be quite beneficial to a lot of people at this time yeah i think it's great that a lot of people are talking about mental health and mindfulness and other concepts um we just need to become a little more clear about what they actually are in practice yeah yeah so just touching on anxiety for a little bit longer it's as I said, it's the ability to inability to manage the unknown. We're trying to control the future, but that's quite futile, futile. We actually make ourselves even worse when we do that. And it's the anxiety, the worry about the future that fuels self doubt and it actually paralyzes us in the present. And when we're listening to that anxiety uh, voice, if you like, we actually believe it's true. And, and, and that overwhelms us. What the, the, the most basic way of handling anxiety is to get some distance from its voice. So if you notice that you're being anxious and you're having worry thoughts, if you can notice that that's only part of you and, it only, and it's only a version of reality, then you have some chance in tackling it. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, 
you know, some, this paralyzes you into inaction is when, the, to me at least, it's when the same idea seems to just find itself going round and round and round and you can't actually break yourself out of that thought. And I know for people at the moment, that's maybe yeah. stuff like when, when am I going to be able to see my friends? When am I going to be able to, or what, you know, what kind of job am I looking at in the future? Yeah. Those thoughts, once they get stuck into a loop, they do become true because you say yeah. something to yourself enough times or you say a yeah. lie to yourself enough times, it becomes the truth. Um, so I think you're right in that like you just need to people need to find a way to just remove themselves from that circular thinking and, and yes. shift their attention else, elsewhere. And notice what you just did to describe anxiety was you asked a bunch of questions of yourself that you can't even answer right now. Yes. When am I going to see my friends again, for instance? And when we're asking those questions we can't answer, we just make ourselves feel even worse. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that makes total sense. So anxiety is also a bit like a bad opinion mm. that's in your head. It's not a fact. We yeah. need to remind ourselves that it's, they're not based on facts. Anxiety is quite irrational. Yeah. Opinions don't equal facts. I think that's uh, pretty straightforward. It's hard to, hard to remember though. Do you think the, the experiencing you're seeing more anxiety and stress than depression at the moment? I guess just going back to those other slides, you know, you're yeah. saying, Depression in the past, anxiety and stress, future and present. Is that kind of what you're seeing because of COVID? I'm seeing a lot more anxiety, but unfortunately, anxiety when it's not treated turns into depression. Okay, yeah. So I'm seeing a lot of people who are anxious about daily things that they would normally not be anxious about. So I spoke to someone the other day about being anxious about posting a parcel Mm. and having to go to either a post box and a post office and having to go past people and be in a public place where they could possibly catch the virus. And I had to walk them through the, the likelihood of it actually happening. Mm. So I, I was pretty much having a conversation with them, challenging their worries as we walk through that scenario and that that's happening a lot yeah yeah i can imagine so people who are normally not anxious at all about going to the post office are quite yeah. anxious at the moment for instance and um so you've said here the answer lies in reframing the question i think that's pretty that's pretty fascinating and you've kind of sort of alluded to an example of that with the post office situation you know you kind of reframe their question as can you give an example of how that would look in that situation? Yes. Your, your example of when am I going to see my friends again? Yeah. Well, let's reframe it to how can I make communication with them right now? Yeah, yeah. So there's your answer straight away. Yeah. There are so many people having Zoom parties at the moment, for instance. Yeah. Which is fantastic. They, they keep the connection alive with their yeah. friend. And um, I guess, yeah, um, you want to move on to the next one? Yeah, or... Sure. So uh, I can flick through the anxiety and get to some of the answers if you like. Um, yeah, yeah. So what I was saying before is, is listed on this slide that notice the anxiety, don't try to fix it or avoid it, mm -hmm. but notice that it, it's just really like an opinion. It's one perspective of what's happening. It's not necessarily the truth. And that has an internal effect on people, but it can sometimes produce physical like external effects too. Like people might notice someone may say, for example, someone's never even known what anxiety means. Like, can you sort of explain what that might be looking like in them at the moment? Yeah. So a typical example would be this really nauseous, awful feeling you get in your guts that, that something's not quite right in your body is often anxiety. It's not, not often, not really a physical problem. Mm. So anxiety can lodge in your body like that. Kind it's, of trying to tell you like... it's trying to tell you something's wrong. Yeah. But it's a mental thing. Yeah. There are all sorts of other symptoms people get um, in terms of moods is a, is a, a symptom in itself. Um, Behaviour that they would do that they would not normally be like. Mm. Uh, ways of communicating where you think, oh, gee, I was a bit blunt there. Mm. 
or oh, they're a little harsh. Maybe that's a sign of anxiety too. Yeah. So there's all sorts of ways you can pick, oh, I'm not quite right at the moment. What's that about? And, it's, and I guess it's about identifying as well what's like a reasonable amount of anxiety given the current situation and what's, if, and you know, I think one of the earlier slides sort of said if you're stuck feeling that way for several days or, you know, is, is that sort of when it's time to maybe start looking at professional help? Absolutely. So if, you, if what tools you have aren't working, seek expert advice. There's, there's, there's so many things that an, an expert can do to help with your particular situation. We're just brushing over the broad aspects of anxiety today. Yeah. On this slide, I've just described how the two main ways of unhealthy ways of dealing with anxiety is we actually try to control more or we become way too passive and, and avoid issues and avoid other people. Mm. We withdraw too much from, from the world and, and both are quite unhealthy. Mm. Yeah, definitely. So here's a way of looking at mental health in terms of skills. So if you think of the different areas of your life, um, this slide calls them capital. Mm. We've, we, we know how important money is and income and assets, and we all spend some time and energy making money and, and increasing what we have mm. is fine. But there's also, also other aspects of, of our lives that we could call just as important capital, including human capital, the skills we learn, the experience we get in our jobs, the education we have. So building that human capital is so important. It's the other two that I spend a lot of time on. And I find that a lot of people spend a lot of their energy on the economic and the human, not enough on the social and the psychological. So that is nurturing your relationships, um, building your contacts, keeping friends, friendships alive, but also that psychological confidence, resilience, optimism, all of these are skills that you can learn and improve. Mm. Yeah, that's, I, I can see how that happens. People would forget about those bottom two, I think, sometimes. So this is my way of saying money's not everything. Yeah. Education's not even everything. We, we need to balance where we spend our time and energy on all four. Yeah. Yeah. Balance is very, very, very crucial, I think. So given that mental health is all about nurturing those psychological skills, build, building your personality. Um, and maybe I can go into a bit more detail if we've got a few more minutes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. About what that is. Yeah. So there's, there's pretty much, to me, four categories of what psychological skills are or psychological capital. Our behavior, what's inside our mind, our mental, our emotional skills and our social skills. Mm -hmm. And maybe in, in when we talk in the future, I can, I can go into much more detail about each of those four. Yeah. And what we know from research over decades now is that the more able you are in each of these four areas, the more happy, satisfied you are with life and the more productive you are. Um, and sorry to say this, but the, the more you actually contribute to society too, mm. um, the better your skills are in this area. Well, I think that, you know, the better, the better you feel within yourself, the better you can take that energy out into the world. Right. It's, pretty much the biggest cliche in self-help that right. <laughs> it, yeah, it's because it's related to, if you love yourself, you can love other people. Well, if you deal oh, with yeah. your own psychology, you can deal a lot better with other people's psychology. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess just, uh, just I'm wary of time, just um, maybe just wanted to see if we could touch on a couple of the real basic um, essentials that people can look at to sort of manage some of that, anxiety and stress that they're feeling at the moment. Yep. So 
Number one for me would be, for most people, it's lowering their expectations of themselves. So am I being realistic today about the goals I've set for today? Mm. A lot of people set the bar way too high. Some people set the bar way too low, but uh, that's another story. Um, I think we expect more from ourselves in terms of the time and energy we have on any particular day. Mm. And once we lower that expectation, we actually become more satisfied with each day. Uh, so what I would suggest is three priorities maximum. And you list them most important to least and if you get those three things done fantastic it's been a good day yeah that's a good point you, I, I hear people say that they should maybe write that list before they go to bed for the next day right i've been told that before is that something you'd recommend too oh uh, particularly yes if you're having trouble sleeping yeah um getting to sleep pen and paper next to the bed very very handy yeah it helps me that's for sure so if you get more than those three priorities done in one day, fantastic. But also don't expect yourself to be the same every single day of the week. Yeah. You'll have days of high energy. You'll have days of low energy. That's very normal. Particularly yeah. during this crisis. Oh yeah. We're not hundred percent a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. So let's not expect too much. Yeah. And then your mood is even is better. And the way you relate to people is better. Because you're not putting that pressure on yourself. On yourself. Yeah. And what about stuff like, um, I know it's so simple, but food, hygiene, sleep, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, I've seen, so, there's something about this crisis where some people have just stopped their normal health and lifestyle goals and just gone, all right, I'm... I'm just going to do whatever I like and not be responsible for my health and well-being. Unfortunately, that just makes everything worse. Mm. So be careful about how much alcohol you drink, um, how much, uh, what kind of food you eat. It's got, it needs to be good quality, not junk all the time. That yeah. affects your moods quite significantly. Yeah. I, I don't think, People don't realize just how significant that is. Yep. And exercise is as, as important now as it ever, ever is. And, and what about hygiene? I know that some people, and especially those working from home, are quick to kind of stay in their trackies all day and maybe not have a shower. How does that play into their mental health? Um, I would actually suggest against it. Yeah. I, I, I would treat a working day as you would going to work, even if you're working from home. So you get up, you have breakfast, you have that shower and you put your work clothes on because mm. then there's a bit more self-respect happening just by having those basic routines. And a bit of, yeah, just a bit of, bit of structure, I guess, as well. Just, you know, people really rely on, I think that's the thing that's thrown a bit through, thrown people out as well. It's just not having that same day that looks the same every day or, you know, where you get up, get changed, go to work, come back, you know, yeah. that lack of structure is definitely messing with people a little bit. Yeah. So structure also means where you set up your workplace at home. So try to have a dedicated area for this is where I do work so that you can, you can structure your time and switch when you need to switch off, you can switch off. Mm. So sort of somewhere separate to their bedroom, separate to their, you know, if, if possible. Yep. If possible, absolutely. And yep. separate to the kitchen too, or else you'll be eating too much. <laughs> True that. <laughs> Imagine that's happening a bit. <laughs> it is. Um, if, if you can have a dedicated space. And then at the end of the day, when you, you get up off your work desk, you can switch off and go into, into personal mode Mm. you might want to change your clothes and mm. get into those trackies then. And that's, it's important to have a, a, a bit of a debrief to self in that moment too, in terms of, all right, how did the day go? What did I do well? And what do I need to improve on for tomorrow? Mm. But 
But what did I do well is so important. What progress have I made is injecting a little bit of self-esteem into you every day. If you can get into the habit of that, that's really important. And I guess some of those achievements can even be little things too, right? You know, like maybe you didn't get out of your trackies today, but tomorrow I'm going to get out of my trackies and that'll be a big tick for my achievements, you know? Oh, it doesn't have to be big at all. Yeah. It, it could simply be, I paid two bills today. Hmm. Or I did that most important work task today. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Okay, well, look, I think we've only got a couple of minutes left. Um, I just wanted to see, was there any other sort of last, last minute basic essentials or basic tips that you wanted to pass on to people for this week's session? And, and we can all obviously go in next week and next week as well, we're going to take some questions from uh, the community too. So, but yeah, if there was anything else you wanted to add last minute? Yeah, happy to answer anyone's questions. So awesome. these, these psychological st skills are all about self-care. So what I'm asking people to do is prioritize their self care. Yep. And because, because that then drives everything else. The, the more you care for self, the better you are in everything else. Yeah. No, it's that pretty, important. That's a pretty good way of, uh, of finishing it off. So I, I think, um, yeah, on behalf of everyone at GoTafe, I'd like to thank you very much, Peter, for your time today. Um, and yeah, we look forward to catching up with you again next week as well. Not a problem. Thanks for the opportunity.